Depth of field is determined by the distance from the nearest object plane in focus to that of the farthest plane also simultaneously in focus. But is it? Depth of field is the concept that you can focus on a range of distances in your photo. Depth of field is what allows you to get two or three rows of people in a group photo in focus. Depth of field is what allows you to focus on something in the foreground in a landscape photo while also getting the distant mountains in focus. But is it real or is it total BS? Because we have tested a lot of the fundamental concepts of photography and found out that they don't actually work the way we were taught. So let's put this to the test. I'm at 16 inches and I want my dad to also be in focus. He's slightly behind me. So let's pull up the depth of field calculator. Focal length, 24 millimeters, F8, one foot, four inches. So if I am in focus here, then my dad can be at one foot, seven inches or 19 inches. Now, because we're scientists, we're going to take a control shot with these two both in the focal plane so that we can compare those two photos and see whether this one is actually in focus when it's still pushed back. If depth of field is real, we should be able to compare that test shot to the control shot and see the same amount of sharpness in our test subject, my dad here. Looking at the back of the camera, yeah, it looks like depth of field is real. They seem to have right about the same sharpness. But here's a lesson I've learned the hard way recording myself on vlogging cameras with that little screen. I often think that I have enough depth of field, but then when I watch it back on a big monitor, I discover that the depth of field is far too shallow and it looks like everything is out of focus. So maybe we should look at this on a computer. Comparing the control and test images in Lightroom Classic and zooming way in, yeah, it's crystal clear that my dad is way out of focus on the test shot. And that makes me think depth of field might not really be real. Okay, but suddenly declaring depth of field is fake is a big conclusion to make. So let's double check this. And my depth of field calculator says that I had three inches behind my subject here that would still be in focus. So I'm gonna move this back just one inch, only one third of the way into the depth of field and we'll test it again. My dad's still visibly out of focus, even when he's only one third of the way through the depth of field. So what is going on here? Have they been lying to us the whole time? Well, in a way they have. We've just the name depth of field indicates a depth to it, right? But the fact is depth of field is a completely flat two dimensional plane that runs parallel to your camera sensor. Anything that's in front of or behind that two dimensional plane is gonna be just slightly out of focus. The term depth of field really just means how much blur can you accept? And that's very subjective. The concept of depth of field worked great when we were taking pictures with our 35 millimeter cameras and printing at four by six, or maybe even printing at eight by 10. But with modern high megapixel cameras and really sharp displays and large prints, you're gonna find that things that are supposed to be in the depth of field aren't all that sharp. And if you are after more sharpness than you might get, what can you actually do? Well, my first bit of advice is to focus on the most important part of the picture. In portraits, that's going to be the subject's nearest eye. In landscape photos, that's going to be your foreground subject. If you actually want more than one part of the picture to be sharp and in focus, then you'll have to work around your camera's limitations a little bit. I like to use focus stacking. I will focus on each important part of the picture and then blend those photos together by using layers in Photoshop. Stunning Digital Photography, the number one photography book for the last decade, has a whole section on that that you might find really educational. Number three, you can raise your f-stop from say f2.8 to f8 or f16, things that are out of focus will be a little less out of focus. They'll be a little sharper, but they'll never ever be quite as sharp as if they were in the focal plane. Also, the higher you go with your f-stop, the more of a factor diffraction is, especially f16, f22. Diffraction reduces the sharpness of the entire image. So then even the part of the picture you focused on is becoming less sharp. So you have to kind of weigh those things. Number four, you can move your subjects into the 
plane of focus. Especially with group portraits, I'll often ask people on the back row to just lean forward a little bit and kind of get yourself more into the picture. And then they're gonna be sharper and it's gonna make your focusing a little easier. Number five, you can not focus on the foreground or the background, but rather focus about one third of the way behind the foreground subject. And that doesn't get everything in focus, but it gets both the foreground and the background equally out of focus. It's kind of a decent way to compromise, but it is a compromise and it is severely compromising sharpness of your image. Number six, you could use a tilt shift lens. This is kind of an old school analog way of doing things, but well, let me grab my lens to demonstrate. Let's take off this 24 millimeter and put on my Canon 45 millimeter tilt shift lens. It can tilt to the left or the right, adjusting the direction of the focal plane. Look through the viewfinder as I tilt the lens to the left and to the right. You can see the background come into focus even though parts of the foreground are still in focus. Now let's see how far I can move my dad to get him back into the plane of focus. Look at the viewfinder there. Wow. He's like almost off the table. He's like 10 inches behind the normal plane of focus. For things like product photography where you're often shooting tight but you want the entire surface of say a watch in focus, even if it's not square to the camera, tilt shift lenses are perfect. Unfortunately, nobody really makes new ones anymore, but these old Canon lenses still work pretty well. If you like this video, I'm kind of short here, please like and subscribe to see more tutorials. Also check out our book, Stunning Digital Photography, the number one photography book in the world. Check out the reviews on Amazon and then buy it from us at northrop.photo so you're getting it directly from, well, my garage because I'll ship it out to you personally. We're a very small business. Also check out our art and science of photography video training series, which goes really into the mechanics of photography as well as the deeper levels of the artistic side of it. Everything comes with a full 100% money back guarantee. Follow up questions, ask them down below. If there's anything you wanna to add to the discussion of depth of field, add a comment, bye. This lens has a depth of field calculator built in. You can see if you're focused here at 15 feet, these aperture numbers tell you how much of the range is going to be in focus. So if you're at F4, things at 10 feet will be in focus all the way out to over 25 feet.